Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel. So it has been, there goes my hair again, a very hot minute. By the time this video goes up, it'll probably be about a week since my last video went up before that. And I think it was the last floss tube. So I don't think we're technically missing a floss tube because I've been posting my floss tubes usually on the weekend. Anytime between Friday and Sunday, I think is when they've typically been going up, but I record them at, ahead of time. Sometimes it's a whole week, sometimes it's a couple of days. This time I haven't recorded anything in about a week, at least. Um, I do have a clip in the hall part that I will insert for you guys to see. And other than that, I just, uh, I don't know. I'm just, I'm going through some personal things right now that make like not knowing what to talk about kind of difficult and not 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 knowing what to talk about but without trying to be like too personal and then um also not be too vague I guess I because I, I don't ever want you guys to feel like I have no idea who this chick is but she shows some cool cross stitch but I don't know anything about her because I want to feel that connection with you guys because I feel like I already had that with a lot of you guys. So anyway, we're on a minute and a half in and I still haven't given an introduction. My name is Amy. Welcome back to my channel. This is a crafting channel. We talk about lots of different crafts here, mostly cross stitch and diamond painting, mostly cross stitch. <laughs> but so you can tell I run a small business, um, a diamond painting business. And I recently cleaned this all up. That's why you see all of these holes here because I've tried to organize them in a way because I have a lot of diamond paintings coming in and they've already shipped. I don't have an ETA, but they're going to be here and I need the space. So I, I even have some more back. You can't see behind me that are um, because the bin, the cubby is full and I'm trying to make it only one cubby per image and then I keep the overflow over there. So we're going to talk about, um, we'll go through the whips first and then um, we'll do, uh, jump into a couple of the extra things that I kitted up for Mania and then we'll go from there. So as per usual, I didn't print out the cover images, but Witchy Stitcher came out with the rest of the pattern. The last of the pattern for, let me take this pattern off of here, even though that's a freebie. Um, the chopping wall. I haven't gotten much progress done since the last time I showed you guys I started this box. The last time I showed you guys it was off the Q-snap. And I don't think I did. Um, all of this was done except for and now I'm starting on this side. Oh, and I did a bunch more of this. So this, we're about halfway done. Uh, this guy does end up getting filled in. It turns out that he is the guy from Hellraiser. So that's, that's pretty neat. You know, it's funny because when she was releasing these patterns, I kept thinking, why? Like, where's Hellraiser? Where's Candyman? Like, I'm surprised it's not on here. And sure shit, when she released the last pattern, all of those dudes were in it. So I'm kind of pleased with that. Um, this is all I've done. I've started on the comforter to the bed and um, the banner. There's two little sheep right here in this um, empty spaces. And then, of course, I have to go in and fill this in with the white, which I hate stitching in white. But it is what it is. I just, my heart hasn't been in stitching this lately and I'm so close to being finished. You guys, I'm more than halfway done. I need to just do it. Um, I've been contemplating just starting, um, what is it called? Either the Addams Family or the Universal Monsters. And it's, it has nothing to do with because they're Halloween. It just hasn't been... I haven't wanted to devote the energy to, um, I don't grid, but you do still have to take your measurements from the inside, uh, going in, where you're going to start, where everything's going to line up, make sure you have enough space, what your borders are going to be, 
I just haven't felt like taking the time to do that. Um, my floss is all ready for both of those, and I just, I haven't, I haven't done it. Um, so, okay, let me get the other one. The only other thing that I worked on is Janessa. I put a few more stitches in Janessa. I think, I don't know, 150. Lost my needle somehow. It fell off. And um, this is where we're at with her. Last time, I had the curve of the shoulder coming up here, but I didn't have any of this filled in, and that's what I spent this time doing. I'm kind of not happy with the harsh transition of the shading here but I'm hoping that once the surrounding stitching is in that it will look better um I always forget to tell you guys because I don't link anything below okay so chopping mall which is the first whip that I showed you guys that is stitched on 16 count shale from picture this plus I got that at one two three stitch and it is a pattern by the witchy stitcher called chopping mall um, you can find it in her Etsy shop. She's got a standalone website now. This is Janessa from the artwork is by Hannah Lynn. It's charted by Heaven and Earth Designs, still available on the website. And I'm stitching this on 28 count even weave that I purchased from Hobby Lobby. It is the Zweigart Artiste brand and it comes almost a full yard. I think I think it's like 30 by 36 so it's it's pretty much almost a full yard um that's currently what I s plan on stitching all my heaven and earth designs on for the most part because I really like the fabric so there's that um, okay then the third and final oops start well no the third whip is actually a new start and you can still see everything. So I put this on a scroll frame. Um, I didn't even bring the chart, uh, but I showed this on my Instagram and it is a freebie as part of the Be Well in Stitch from like all, everything that's going around right now. And this chart is called Light by Barbara Anna Designs. And I started this last, um, I don't think it's been a full week yet. I started it. I think I started it on my birthday, which was April 20th, if I'm not mistaken. And this is where I've gotten. So I did have to roll up the scroll frame because when I started, it was more like right here. And then I had to move it. So it does come out a little further down. And this is how much I've gotten. Um, this right here is what's taking me the longest with very little progress to show because it's like these weird snowflake designs and it's three colors. So you have the white in the middle, you've got the tan, and then you've got the brown and it's a pain in the ass. So this I'm stitching on, I have the card here somewhere. I think it's 28 count bone cashel linen that I got off of D-Stash. I have no idea where you can get it, um, but that's what the tag said. And, um, yeah, I think at this point I'm about halfway done because this border does not come all the way down. It come right now I'm starting the curve to come up around this way and it stops about here. And then there's um, like a lamp hanging, which is less stitching than doing this. So a couple of things with this chart that I've noticed is that I do not like the color progression that they've chosen to do I don't even know if progression is the right word, but the color choices that they chose for the um, the berries and the fox. So it's the same two DMC. You can see down here, doesn't that look like the same color? And right here, looks like the same color, right? Am I missing stitches right there? No, I'm not. Um, it looks like the same color. It is not. If you look very closely in the light, you can see that this is more of a coppery color and this is more of a, my camera is trying way too hard to focus. This is more of a red or more red, maroon, more copper, but you really have to be looking for the difference. And if you didn't know that there was a difference, you can't tell that there's a difference. And the fox was charted in the same two colors. I 
I started changing the colors of the berries right here. So anytime the berries are touching, I changed it to be this orange and this berry color here, um, the more maroon color. So here they're touching. So I changed the two colors so that you could tell that they were two distinct like berries. And then here they're not touching. So I changed them to be um, to the original colors in the chart. The fox is charted in these two colors. I did not like it. I started um, because you do the dark one and it comes up like this. And then you do the other coppery color. I didn't like the way that it looked. They look like the same damn color. And when you put the two skeins next to each other, you can tell the difference. But I feel like it's because there's such a big mass of color that it's noticeable. But when you're comparing it to delicate stitches, the transition is non-existent. You can't even tell that they're two separate colors and I didn't like that. So I have to do some, a little bit of reconfiguring when it comes to the top of her tail. There's gonna be some speckles of, it's supposed to be speckles of this color, but I'm gonna bring in the other copper color here um, and in her face. So it's it'll be fine because I'm not changing the position of any of the stitches. I'm just changing the color so that it looks more defined and not just like a blob of this maroon color, in other words. Um, I've got several mistakes in the vines here, including right here. So this one was supposed to start coming off of this branch coming out and it's not. So I left the string hanging over here and I don't know if I'm going to um, unpick it and do that part over again or if I'm going to leave it because <laughs> let's face it like plant to grow all kinds of crazy different things I don't know if I'm going to come back in and put a couple of extra stitches here no idea um I also changed I think I talked to you guys about my color conversion for this I'm not even 100% sure um if not when I show the finish of this I will share the conversion for it because my greens are not what's called for um either because I didn't have them but yeah love it I spent way too long talking about that. And the reason that this is stopped here is because that's the end of the page. So that's why I stopped there. Um, there's not gonna be, I think there's a tiny bit right here of like her shoulder. She's wearing like a shawl, um, which is maybe like 10 stitches. And then the rest of her tail and, um, oh, the top of this. But I need to move this scroll frame because I went up as far as I could go here and I can't go anymore. So there's that wasn't planning on having a new start but like I said I just haven't been feeling quite right so I wanted to start something different because I just my heart wasn't in stitching some of the other things so um what is Adam's family stitch along so this is a stitch along from a new company called just stitch designs and it looks like this um, at this point he's got the Belfry um, this room and this room released and Pugsley goes somewhere I don't remember where he goes he's also released um, it's stitched on murky I think it's a picture of this puzzle I'm not too sure it's called murky something if you go to one two three stitch and type in murky you'll see it <sighs> so I didn't have any of the colors to make murky my Joann's and my Hobby Lobby in my city are completely shut down they're not even doing curbside orders and in order to do a curbside order at Joann's oh we have to drive to El Paso which is 40 minutes away and I just I couldn't justify it not like I have to my husband's like whatever if you want to go go that's fine but I don't want to go by myself um also I'm not comfortable taking the kids because 40 minutes one way 40 minutes back that's over an hour already of drive time and if they need the bathroom I'm not comfortable taking them to a gas station or a Walmart or anything right now to use a public restroom so that was out of the question um so I tried to diet myself did not go at all like I had planned 
but um, it is what it is. I'm going to use it anyway. So this is what I came out with. I haven't ironed it yet. Uh, there's sections that definitely have a lot more brown. I think the brown is exactly what I was going for and some of the gray because I used a dark gray. And then I, for the brown, I mixed a whole bunch of colors. But I'm almost considering coming in with a blue, no, blue, um, brighter yellowy tan color because I did get some yellows and oranges. And I, I feel like that just might make this a good dupe to be murky. But then at the same time, I'm like, oh, if it doesn't come out right, like how then like I'm really out of fabric. Um, so I don't know. That was my only thing. I still might. Oh, I pulled all the floss for it and there's a ton of grays but I think that they're still like see that's the only thing because there's a lot of gray in this fabric and there's a lot of gray in the chart because it's got like the rock um things here and I think that's what I love about this and then these um like the edges of like the roofs um, what would they be called? Like the molding, I guess, is um, gray as well. And I think that's why I'm so like dead set on getting, putting some of the yellow in this. My only thing is that, look at there's still these kind of colors in here. And I'm afraid that putting some of the yellow orange in there is going to be a problem for those. So later when I iron this, I'm going to pull these grays out. And just make sure that they're going to stand out enough because I'm really worried about it. If not, I mean, I guess I could stitch 535 and 413 look almost the same. I guess I could stitch them. I don't know. I don't know, guys. I'm just nervous about it and I want it to stand out more. And I don't know where some of the other colors are going to be in here. And so it kind of makes me worried. I could just try to chart it on a piece of the fabric where the gray is on more parts of the fabric where it's brown. That would work. I don't know. So there's that. I did that last week. Um, and I think that's it. I'm going to insert the beginning of my haul here. So you guys can see the other stuff that I got that I had sitting for some time. And then I, I hurried up and put it away because... It needed to be put up so I'm gonna insert that here and then we'll be back for the rest of the haul all right guys so get you guys right there all right we're gonna do another um, haul snippet because my back hurts falling off my chair um, I want to get this stuff put away and maybe kitted I don't know because I ordered, I believe we're just like totally off center here. I ordered some fabric for some of it. So, um, we're just gonna get into it. See how long it takes. Okay, on to the haul. So the next section of the Adams Family Stitch Along came out. And it's Pugsley. Look at that. Isn't that the cutest thing ever? And so the way he's also releasing it is that each section also has another piece of the castle, like, like the mansion frame, their house. It's essentially their house. And so part of it also came out with, I have to show it from the back because it's another like part of the outside with like the graveyard in the background and stuff. So that's that. Isn't that cute? I'm obsessed with it. I think it fits so perfect. And in the, I only print the pages I need, but when you get the digital copy, it gives like a whole bunch of information about the original show. It shows pictures of like snippets from the original show where you can see like Pugsley's room in the original TV series. Um, he does a really good job. So there's that. 
then um, keeping on the printed portion um, Beth Twist from Heartstring Samplery released another freebie and it's called Cup of Whiskey and it says I'll call you my cup of tea I'd call you my cup of tea but I prefer whiskey oh, I love that and I think this is gonna be good with maybe like Ondive or Ondive from is it Classic Colorworks? Maybe. It might be a little too mustardy. I might need like another copper color, but oh, it's so freaking cute. And she's got it all charged in DMC, so you could totally use the DMCs, but I think I'm gonna use a fancy floss for that. I absolutely love that. It's so cute and it's only 88 by 110. Oh, it's the grid size. The stitch area is 86 by 108. Love it. Love it. So there's that. I think I saw this on her Instagram. I follow her Instagram and she had a link. There is a um, link tree that you go to, my camera's just not focusing today, a link tree that you go to, and it'll take you to her, her patterns. And then another freebie was, um, where did I see this at? I have no idea where I saw this at. I saw it either in one of the Facebook groups or something, and she posted a picture of it, and on the bottom corner, it had the person's name. And I feel like her name was something with a C, Colleen, or uh, I might totally even be wrong about that, but um, her blog is called The World in Stitches. So if you just Google The World in Stitches patterns, they'll come up. And I downloaded this Ravenclaw crest. She has all the Hogwarts houses, and then she also has a Hogwarts crest. And I'm probably also going to download the Hogwarts one. Um, I couldn't, I printed this from my phone, which is what I prefer to do, but I, it wasn't pulling up the Hogwarts one for some reason. So I think I'm going to, um, get on the computer and see if I can print it out this way. But I'm a Ravenclaw anyway, and I loved this. And this is also, I feel like this is the same bird that I'm going to be using, um, on the Harry Potter the Stitch Your Own Adventure because I'm converting the inside of the pattern from what Stuart gave us into um, one that another, I don't, I don't want to say customer, but something that another group member posted for everybody to use. So there's that, um, the world in stitches. And they have this charted for 16 count and it's supposed to come out as six by seven and a half inches on 16 counts. So it's not incredibly huge. And 16 counts are pretty good. I like that. Um, so, okay. So today's Sunday, the 19th. Tomorrow is April 20th, which is my birthday, which this part isn't going up until way past but um my mom i was talking to my mom because um the heaven and art designs came out with a limited edition chart from rose con and it was only going to be available for a month and my mom had just recently bought a whole bunch of rose con puzzles and i was like oh mom check this one out. i said maybe this is going to be a puzzle at some point too like you should keep an eye on it and she just released like two other puzzles i can't remember that one with the dragons that go across the top like that um that literally came out like a couple weeks ago and my mom already had it um so anyway she came out heaven art designs came out with a limited edition um chart from her for her image called magic study and i was telling my mom that i wanted it and she's like oh i'll get it for you for your birthday and she did so um that's what it looks like so thank you mom i don't think she watches anyway but this is Magic Study by Rose Calm by Heaven and Art Design. So it's a full coverage kit. I may or may not have already ordered fabric for this and fabric for the next thing I'm about to show you. 
Um, I'm obsessed with it. It's 90 colors. Currently, this is the only size and the only color amount that you can get, I'm pretty sure. But I think you can order a custom, which I'm not, like, I don't do that. Or I never have. I mean, not that there's anything wrong with it, I just haven't. Um, but yes. Oh, I love it. So, on 25 count fabric, this is 30 by 22 inches. And I think I ordered 28 count even weave for that. So since I was already there and my mom was getting me a pattern, I thought, you know, I'm going to get myself a pattern too. And I did. Um, so I think he had a new release because Heaven Art Designs does an amazing job at constantly bringing out new charts. There was some other stuff that he came out with and I was like, ooh, those are nice. But then when I started looking through his other images, I couldn't make a decision. I had like four or five that I kept going back and forth. Ultimately, I ended up getting this one. It is called Magic Castle by Cairo Marchetti. And originally, what, um, why isn't it focusing? What turned me on to Cairo Marchetti's work is my mom actually has a puzzle of Tarot Town 2. And it was amazing. We worked on it together. She had just started it um, <clears throat> one of the times before I went to go see her. Um, we worked on it together and it was so much fun. And I didn't know this was like before I really got into Heaven and Earth Designs. I knew about them, but I was way too intimidated to even look at them. And um, we then I saw. I think it's Crafting Gamer Jamie or Crafting Gaming Jamie, something to that effect, um, here on YouTube, also working on Tarot Town. And then that's when I really started looking at his artwork and I just couldn't decide there was this, this one. I think the other one's called City of Swords. And then he's also got a couple of Egypt ones that look amazing as well. I couldn't decide. Ultimately went with this one because I love the blue in the sky. I love all the greenery, but I also like how you kind of have like a rainbow of colors up here. And then some, looks like there might be some color blocking and it didn't look, just down here is where it looks like it's gonna get a little difficult, but uh, we'll see, we'll see. Then, um, we continue with the pattern section, I got, my issue of just cross stitch for the month of june um <clears throat> and honestly i think we're gonna give this away in this video because it's just not my cup of tea this this month um there is some really cute ones in here just not my style of stitching so we're gonna go ahead and give this away and all you have to do is comment down below that you um, would love to read this. Just cross stitch. Um, the keyword is going to be read. Uh, and this is a snapshot of all of the patterns that are in this issue. So this year they're doing um, flowers of the month. And each magazine, because they come out every other month, you get two flowers in every magazine. This one also has some houses, uh, another house right here, and then um, there's this like tray stitch along thing that they're doing. I don't know why it's not focusing today. You've got this cool bowling alley, um, eat, stitch, sleep, repeat. These cute Mother's and Father's Day ones, little sampler types. Here, this tree is pretty, super confetti, um, but yeah. So that's all the patterns that you get in here. There's also even um, some blackwork style uh, patterns here. This is another stitch along. I can't remember what that one's called. But um, if you guys end up getting this and you particularly want like the flowers or um, the stitch along, whoever wins this, if you want the other patterns to those, if you end up doing them, I'll totally send them to you because I have no inclinations of stitching either of those ever. So there's that. Um, I'm not going to do a flip through of this because I don't, 
I think it'd be kind of boring. I don't know. So this is going to be giveaway. Don't say the word giveaway. Um, just say that you'd like to read the Just Cross Stitch. Or that you'd like to read the catalog. I can't. I rearranged everything and everything's like crazy. So now, <clears throat> this is way longer than I intended it to be. But I think by the time I record my next floss tube, there's not going to be much haul. Because all I ordered was floss from 123 Stitch, which hasn't even shipped at this point, so I doubt I'll get it. Friday Night Fight Night, which might not be here. And one more thing. Oh, the fabric that I ordered last night for the um, full coverage pieces. I don't think that's going to be here either by next week, so this might be the whole haul section. Um, oh, color and cotton. I told you guys last week that I was waiting on this order. It came the next day after I already edited and uploaded the video. I probably could have waited to edit it and upload it, but I hate doing that. Um, I kind of like to just get it up so that the day that the video is going to go up, it I can just go into YouTube and click publish or put it on public instead of private and it's done. Um, but I got my color and cotton order. So two-ish weeks ago. They're having a sale for $2 a skein, and if you use Fancy Floss, $2 a skein is hell of a good deal. And um, I, I get all of my Fancy Floss, for the most part, from Margaret from the Little Thread Shop, and she doesn't carry color and cotton. And so um, when you do the mobile version of the color and cotton website, they have like a quick order thing. So it's just a quick list and you can go boom, 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 and just add everything to the cart. So that's what I was doing and I was in such a hurry because I didn't want anything to sell out that I was just going down in a line, down in a line. And at the bottom you can see how much is in your cart, like the total. And so I just did it until it was like at 36 or 37 dollars that we was shipping. I paid roughly 40 bucks I think. And I ended up getting 17 skeins. Was not paying attention to what colors they were. I wasn't paying attention of getting too much of one color or too little of one color, nothing like that. I was just adding. So after I got them, I went back to go see if um, it's really windy outside, so I'm looking out, out at the trees. Um, I went back to order some more, and they were all completely sold out except for four skeins. And one of them was like a super, super bright, like I think it was called like acid green or acid rain or something. It was like fluorescent glowing green color. One was like a fluorescent pink and then there's two other colors and I was like, eh, four skeins, it really isn't worth it, especially for two that I was just like, nah. So, um, here's the first round of Color and Cotton that I got. Um, their Floss of the Month Club is also open right now and I was very, very tempted to sign up for it because this floss looks really good and after like kind of playing with it a little bit and testing out one strand, um, it, it's decent but the Floss of the Month for five skeins was going to be almost $20 because you have to pay shipping still and shipping was almost $4 and so if you do the, um, if you buy like the three month pack and the six month pack and the yearly pack, if you buy one of those, then shipping is included in the whole price. But when you buy it every month, it's like twelve fifty plus another almost four dollars of um, shipping, and it was gonna come out to almost seventeen dollars for me because it was uh, sixteen seventy three. I think is what it came out to be, and I just. Mm, that's a little much for me. $17 for only five skeins of floss a month is a little pricey and I just, I didn't want to do it. So back to, um, back to the subject at hand. So these are the threads I ended up getting. I got apricot, which is a peachy color, light peach, kind of orangey. Ooh, that looks nice right there. Um, autumn bouquet. Oh, coming up pretty good. Bayou, uh, Arctic, ooh, look at that, that's nice, 
Mm -hmm. Almond latte. Ooh, this might be good for the whiskey. Maybe not. It might be a little too bright, but I like it. Um, Autumn Gourd. That's cute. That's a nice yellow. Not fluorescent, but not dark. Um, Begonia. That's an interesting pinky color. Carmine. This one, variations are not showing up so much on this one, but I can see it in person. It's just not picking up on camera. It's kind of washing it out because it's kind of bright. And then Bargello, which Michelle Pendy was just talking about this in her most recent floss tube about um, her and somebody else were doing, like, using the same color. And I had totally had at least that I had gotten it. I already had it in my possession when her video came out. So, Bargello. I still don't even know what I'm going to do with these. I have them in the bag still because I don't have like a fancy floss place. And then, the second bag is like this. We've got Caribbean. This is probably one of my favorites. Bellflower. Americano. Ooh, I like that. Aloha. Kind of looks like, let me see. Autumn Gourd. They are a little close. Um, Autumn Gourd has way more variegation in it though. Has a another pale yellow in it, and this one's pretty much all bright. Yeah, that one's a lot brighter than the other one. Adobe. This is another good color. This is a good for house. Uh, Aztec. This is more peachy. Bermuda. Ooh, this is another one of my favorites. Super pretty. And Bluebell. This is the only one that has a white gloss card. So I don't know why. I don't know if they're doing something different. It's even written different. So I don't know. This one's even thicker than the others. I don't know if this is new or old. But that looks nice. This looks like... I have a classic color works that looks very similar to this too. I'll have to do a comparison and see. Okay. Now, looking at this, I'm wondering... You guys saw me haul, uh, what is it called? Book House by Stone Street. My cat. Book House by Stone Street Stitchworks. We hauled, or I hauled something from them, and I was considering changing the color of the house to be more of a reddish, bricky color um, because my mom lives in a red brick house. So I'm wondering, I don't know, I just don't think this is dark enough. Now that I think about it, now that I look at it, at first glance I was like, ooh, that'll look nice. But I think it's too bright. Might have to find another red. But that's kind of my train of thought on that. What else do I have? Is that Bargello? Yeah. I didn't get any other red colors. Oh, I did. Carmine, but that's way too bright. Yeah, that's too bright to be brick red. I'm sure there's another brick red somewhere. So anyway... Uh, let me grab all these so you guys can see them really quickly. This portion ended up being way too fucking long, so I'm kind of hoping that none of the other shit comes in so that the haul is shorter. That's what that looks like. No idea what I'm going to do with these yet. No freaking clue. Right now I just have my Victoria Motto sitting in a thing. Who knows? So, bookie haul. Walmart has a huge bit of books for six bucks right now. I haven't looked into this series, but apparently it's a series called the, hold on, Carpathian series. And this looked really good in reading the um, jacket on the inside. It is by Christine Freeham, or Freeham, and it's called Dark Legacy. And it says a Carpathian novel, but I haven't had a chance to look it up yet to see if this is the first book, second book, 10th book, no idea. So... I will be checking that out and adding this to my shelf. Um, it says they were already bargain bestsellers for $6.50, but on Walmart's bin, they had it for 
$5.49, I think. They have a ton of freaking books there. And I was going to get more, but I didn't feel like sorting through them. And they had them, like, really placed in there haphazardly. And I was afraid it was going to come tumbling down on me. And that was the last thing I needed to have happen in front of me. So that's the bookie haul. Okay, I realized that that was really long. And I apologize. What can I say? Right? What can I say? Okay, so for the rest of the haul, um, I talked about this before, Hand Dyed by Rolanda carries Silk Floss now. Um, I first saw it on mislaid pages and I was very curious and um, I don't know what to think about these because they don't feel like silk to me. This is what they look like. They look really nice and they look silky in camera but they're not like they definitely have this sheen to them but these definitely feel more along the lines of like the satin floss that dmc has i don't know if you've ever seen the satin if if and when everything opens back up if you go to hobby lobby joanne's i'm not 100 percent sure if joanne's carries it i don't tend to go to Joann's because I don't like Joann's um they just my Hobby Lobby just has a larger cross stitch section so I prefer to go there um but this is very similar to the satin floss that DMC offers and not at all like silk um looking at these and I picked out one of the ends and I threaded it and it really feels and works up like the satin floss and not like silk at all I guess there's just different kinds of silk I don't know but I'm kind of like mm, because I think I paid $15 for these expecting them to be silk and they're not silk I mean in my opinion I don't there might be different types of silk but these aren't. I wouldn't even call these silk. If I had these and I was selling these, I wouldn't call them silk. And the way that they look in the camera is very misleading. But I feel like if you look at the ends, you can. I feel like you can just tell that they're not silk. I don't know. It might just be me. These honestly feel like regular DMC threads that have been conditioned. That's, that's all that they feel like to me, to be completely honest. Um, they still look nice but and they're variegated too which was a surprise because i wasn't expecting them to be variegated she has a whole bunch they're not ridiculously expensive they're still super affordable and they're still really cute and i think i may even be using this gold one maybe the blue one i'm not sure i have um what's the do 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 in the universal monster cell there's a room with a mummy and he's got a, a casket what is it what are the mummies sarcophagus he has a sarcophagus and I've been looking for some silk floss to replace the DMC with so it would be more shiny um, because it's supposed to be really luxurious and so <sighs> this blue might work and this gold might work it depends because I did order some silk floss from elsewhere and so I just that's not gonna be here for some time so I don't know I just I'm not really impressed by the silk that she has. Um, I've stitched with silk. I've, I have silk from other places and it's nothing like this. Um, and her little um, card says that this is a limited edition silk floss pack with 100% silk. I don't know. But that is all I'm going to say about that. Oh, here's the the thing. It just says 28 count cashel, which I know is a linen that I got for five bucks off of these bash. All right. So part, I think this is, oh, no, no. What do I do with that other one? Okay. So this I saw in one of the cross-stitch groups I, I don't even know which group more more than likely cross-stitch unlimited um but this is from sweet water studio 
I can't remember her name. She's a very sweet lady. Um, she has an Etsy shop. If I can remember, I'll link it below. If not, you can find it with the information that I'm giving you. So, oh, Patty, Patty Moran, that's her name. She came out with this sampler called the Skeptics Sampler. And the story behind this is supposedly there's a floss tuber out there who says that he likes samplers and he likes the look of samplers, but he's not religious, but he keeps stitching them even though they have a religious quote on them or they have some kind of religious thing. There's a lot of um, samplers out there with Adam and Eve on them, but they're not religious. And so they're like, eh, I don't really want to hang this in my house because it's religious. I'm not religious either. And so when I saw this, I had to get it. She hadn't even posted it yet in her Etsy shop and I think the response was so overwhelming that she posted it for sale in her Etsy shop. So affordable. I think it was like five something and it's called the Skeptics Sampler and it looks like this. It has a quote on here from Carl Sagan and which he's a scientist and then you have all these scientists up at the top. You have Einstein, Newton, Marie Curie, um, Neil deGrasse Tyson, he's still alive too, so that's cute. Uh, oh, Darwin, love that. And then here, she's provided an alphabet and some instructions as far as what to do here, which I don't think I'm going to, I don't know, I don't really like putting my name like this, so I'll probably like put some initials somewhere, like down here or something, but here... I'm not sure what to do. And then as far as this is concerned, because this is a COVID chart, so she has a COVID um, germ ball <laughs> right there, and then a carbon uh, element, and then this. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put more space in between these and bring them down a bit to make up for this space here. So this is gonna sit more like right here in this area, and this is gonna come down, and this is gonna come down. And then they'll just be a little bit here. I might come in, maybe do some French knots for stars. Or she's already got some like stars here. So maybe I'll just add in a couple more of those. But um, I really love this. I have no idea when I'll get to stitch in it. I'm not sure. And the DNA is around the edge. Oh, it's cute. But honestly, it looks like a bitch to stitch. And I think what I'm going to do is... Cause it looks like this is probably three different colors. I think what I'm gonna do is get something variegated, blue and red, and stitch that. And use the same thread all the way around so that I don't have to stitch um, all the different colors. There's that. And then the last couple of things to haul are, of course, another Bee Stitch Me order from the Friday Night Fight Night. I got, uh, 32 count Joblin in Acid Rain. Whoa, that is something else, isn't it? No project in mind, no idea why I got it. I just had to have it. Um, it's one of her smaller cuts. It's only 17 by 17, so it was only 12 bucks, so it's not gonna put me out. I think I'm gonna save it for one of my Bewitching Pixies. Um, and then I also got, this doesn't have a color on it this 18 count Ada. I don't know what the color is, but it is a like a grayish tan color. And I have so many colors like this from Be Stitch Me and they're all different. Um, this is her normal 18 by 21 size. Um, I got those. And then you guys, I want another giveaway in her group. This is the second time I've won. I never win anything ever. And this is the second time that I won in her freaking group in like a month, maybe. Um, so what she does is everybody who participates in the Friday Night Fight Night, um, the next day she does a ton of giveaways. Sometimes it's like 10 and then other days it's like closer to 15, 16 giveaways, like separate items. And there was a lot this day and I freaking won. I was shocked. Not only did I win, I won a chart that has been on my wish list since Michelle Bendy stitched it weeks and weeks ago. And it's Glendon Place's Halloween Luck. You guys, if you are not in Be Stitch Me, Be Stitch Me's Facebook group, you need to be. Um, 
the only way that you can get entry into her giveaways is by purchasing it. So you can comment on her videos, I mean on the giveaway things, but she's on top of her shit and she checks to make sure that you actually purchase because giveaways are designated for the people who are actually purchasing during the Friday night fight night and there's no quota to how much you need to buy. Um, as long as you buy at least one thing, you're good. So I'm so excited about this. The dogs are barking a lot and the camera's in a different position and what can I do? So I had to plug you guys in so I hope that it's not like, okay. So what do I do with the chart? You guys, I can't even with how excited I am for this chart. Um, I just can't believe that I actually won a chart that's been on my wish list for a very long time. So I've kind of been trying to rein in my chart stuff, <laughs> buying new patterns and whatnot because I have a lot like a lot a lot and I really want to actually work on a lot of the things that I have and in order to do that like I don't necessarily need to stop adding to my pile but like I need to stop spending so much time looking at other charts because I could be stitching that whole time right so this only calls for 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. This calls for 14 colors and she charts it in, oh no, 14, 15, 16, 16 colors and a treasure braid. No, no, no. 16 colors with a Krynik included in that 16 and a, oh my god, you need two, and then a bead, black bat, three black bats. Okay. I see the black bats. I think we'll be okay skipping those. And a four leaf clover, which I think is his necklace, which I may or may not be able to find. We'll see. So I have to, the camera's in a weird. I can see myself all here, and the thing is over there. So, like, you're in totally different wave position than I'm normally used to filming. So, if I look a little funky cross side, that's why. Um, right, so these little bats are charms, and then on his neck here, he's got that little four-leaf clover that, um, I'll probably substitute. And then this is charted and has one dinky dye silk, which is apricot. May or may not get it, not sure, and two spools of crinic orange ruptus. So, uh may or may not use that as well depending on where it is at in the chart I might just substitute it for something else yes okay enough about that do I have anything else to show you I mean I have stuff but it's not here yet um I feel like I'm forgetting something oh mania uh, okay so you guys saw that <laughs> I printed something out. Okay, let me show you. Okay, so you guys know that I'm doing also doing the Harry Potter letters. I feel like I need to be right here. Letters from Hogwarts, Stitch Your Own Adventure. A kind lady who, her name is not on this, stitched the clouds over the Hogwarts Express. This is just for reference. It's not the actual, like what the actual train looks like, but um, I had to have it. And she was so kind as to post the chart for free in the files of the group. So I printed that out because I wanted it. Okay. Then, you guys saw the, what was it called? Bewitching? I think it was called Bewitching Cross Stitch or something like that. It was a book by Joan Elliott with a, like 40 or more of her Joan Elliott charts in it. And I printed a working copy of A Wizard's View, which is the uh, chart that I wanted to stitch from there. The whole reason why I bought the book. So, I'm going to get used to this. I pulled all of the DMC. I made a bunch of substitutions because I didn't have all the colors. Um, this chart 
the model is stitched on a pole stitches fabric called I'm not sure um, but it's something that's like this something with this color but a little bit lighter than this and so I'd already had this and originally I had this kitted up with maybe not because this is a February fabric of the month no this is called Nova but this is very similar to Twinkle um, which is by Be Stitch Me so this is Nova by Be Stitch Me this was the February fabric of the month and this is what it looks like and it is the closest thing I have to what this wizard is actually stitched on let me show you guys I feel like I feel like I'm just not explaining it well we are back so it was in this book bewitching cross stitch I got it on where did I get it eBay I think that on eBay for like 11 bucks which is still so made a working copy because I had to because I don't want to stitch out of the book I can find it here it is so it's stitched originally on pole stitches imagination stitch on 28 count Joblin I'm gonna use not to 28 count first at all um 16 count so mine's gonna be a little bit smaller which is fine because theirs was 17 by 21 so mine on 16 count is gonna be a little bit smaller which is perfect this is 18 by 21 so it's still it's the perfect size um no the fabric on 14 count is 12 by 16 so on 16 count it's gonna be smaller than that that's the, the fabric size is what they have because they have both and it's, it confuses me every time anyway um this is what they stitch theirs on hopefully you can see because it's kind of getting dark there we go this is what they're stitching theirs on this is a pole stitches imagination first i couldn't i couldn't find it on their website and what's even weird is that it's it says imagination with quotations but they didn't have anything called imagination they had one that looked just like it but it was called something else I can't remember what it was called and then plus it's pole stitches so they're not in America didn't want to wait for them to ship it so naturally it was like can I remake this can I dye this can I what can I do with it so I looked through my stash again and is that not like the perfect dupe for it right I happen to agree so yeah that was a win uh, so I kitted that up, threw it in with my possible stars for Mania, except that I didn't have all the called for floss, so I substituted one, two, three, four, five, six, I substituted six of the flosses. Two of them are, um, DMC 152 and DMC 155 that I was hoping I'd have by now that I ordered from 123 Stitch coming up on a week and a half ago um I don't know I so I wasn't gonna order them but I've been hearing everybody's posting in all the Facebook groups like where are you guys ordering from where are you ordering from where, where who's still shipping who's still shipping and I knew that 123 stitch was still shipping and everybody was saying that they were getting their orders ridiculously fast and normally under normal circumstances all of my one, two, three stitch orders have shipped same day or the next day. Um, but when COVID first hit, I placed two orders back to back. The first one shipped right away the same day and the next one didn't ship for a couple of days. And then I don't think I've placed another order until I think it's, I think at this point I'm like at today's seven or eight days that I placed the order. And it hasn't shipped yet um it said that it was slated for an estimated ship date of today um and it it hasn't shipped yet today's saturday so i mean i don't really expect it to ship today but i don't know like maybe they ran out maybe they were out of stock they never haven't sent me anything that says that they're out of stock so that order what i did was i went into one two three stitch and i placed an order for every color 
in the DMC line from number two or wherever it starts out all the way to 209, every color that was in stock. Um, what, what I did, I sat on it for a couple of days. And so when I actually went to go pay, there was probably five colors that I had to erase that were out of stock and it asked me to erase those colors. So I'm not gonna have every single color, but I didn't have any of those colors at all. And I've got several hate charts, this one, and more hate that was asking for those colors so um the ones that i am getting i'm gonna have to share in between the heaven art designs charts that i have which is fine because they don't none of them use a full skein of it um so for this chart because i knew i was going to put it in my hate i just substituted the colors for as close as i could match it to what was already in my stash and it worked some of these purples are different um one of these greens is different um i'm not sure what else. i know two of the purples are different so but this chart has a lot of blues and purples and then of course i floss tossed it everything looks fine uh i also compared to where it was at on the chart it should be fine there should be no issues whatsoever the only 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 thing was his lips his lips were one of the colors that I substituted, and so I'm not 100% sure. I actually think this is one of the lip colors, if I'm not mistaken. I used 223. If I'm not mistaken, this is one of them. But if not, I'm hoping that by the time I get to his lips, I should have those DMCs. I'm, I'm not starting this tomorrow, so. <laughs> and even if I did, I'm not starting with his lips, right? So there's that, everything ready to go in my mania pile. So uh, as mania gets closer and closer, I'm I'm a little torn on how I want to do mania because I'm also prepping for finals, but because we're at home now and I don't have to go to class and spend so much time driving, waiting in the car, blah, 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 running around between the kids' school and whatnot. Um, I'm still really torn. I really liked Stephanie from Lindy Stitch's uh, Sania idea where she works on one piece during the whole week and if she sticks to working on that one piece um, then you can reward yourself with a new start on the weekend. I like that. I like that idea. But then uh, I don't know. And then I'm like, well, I've spent all this time kidding up all this stuff. But then I say no, because I want all this stuff kitted up. I don't know what it is, but going through all of my stash, there, I have so many more charts that I want to kit up. I just like knowing that they're there for me to just pluck from the pile and start willy-nilly whenever I get a wild hair at my ass and want to start it. I don't know what it is. There's so much satisfaction for me knowing that I have all that shit kitted up. It's like a diamond painting. I can totally go and pluck. Okay, let me show you guys. All of everything up there. That is all my stash. It's like a diamond painting. If I pull a diamond painting from there, they automatically all already have the colors in them. So I could technically start any one of them at any point in time, especially mine because they come in resellable bags. So I don't have to put the gems, the beads, the drills, however you want to call them, um, in a separate container. I can literally just pull it out and start working on it and put it away at any point in time. That's how I like my cross stitch. Is that bad? And then I feel like, damn, I really need this DMC. But I have it kitted up in one of my hates because I need 15 three tens, but I need another skein. I need one skein for this one project that I'm working on now, but I don't want to pull one skein from the 15. So I go and buy more. <laughs> so that's the dilemma that I have. Oh, yeah, yeah. Anywho, my husband's hanging a nap. I need to go wake him up so that we can barbecue dinner tonight. I, we haven't had a good steak in a really long time um it's for us we typically eat out a lot and we usually make steak a lot um my husband loves steak we have teenage boys no no my stepson's 20 so he's not even a teenager anymore but 
um, you know, we have a growing boys too. My son's 14 or he'll be 14 in a couple weeks. And the girls, they love steak too. And since with everything going on, we haven't been able to find steak at all find steak. All they have is like the little thin, thin, thin ones that you can't put those on the grill. Like they do. I mean, you can, but they don't, they don't taste the same at all. Um, so I went grocery shopping this morning. I went to three stores hoping to just find some good meat. I found some meat, not great meat, but it's going to have to suffice. So we're going to do steak, zucchini and squash, uh, jalapeno we call them rats here which is a hollowed out um jalapeno with string cheese stuffed on the inside wrapped in bacon um i my ex-husband used to call them armadillo eggs we call them rats um a lot of people call them jalapeno poppers but they're not poppers because poppers are technically fried these are not deep fried. They're not covered. Jalapeno poppers have a breading over the outside. These don't have that. They're wrapped in bacon and they're fried on the grill. You can make them in the oven, but they don't get as crispy as they do on the grill. So we're going to make those. Maybe potatoes, baked potatoes. Um, oh, and cabbage. If I have enough foil, we'll do balls of cabbage. I think my daughter went in my room. I just don't want to wake my husband up. He hasn't been feeling good. They all got this weird stomach bug. Um, so I made some dinner the other day and the little kids couldn't eat it. I was just going to make them a pizza. My husband, he has a uh, diverticulitis and so he has to watch what he eats and uh, he gets an upset stomach quite often. So he decided he wasn't going to eat the red chili because I made red chili pork and decides to order them all Panda Express. The problem is that Panda Express closes like at 9.30 and they went at 9 and I think the food was bad because um, the three people that ate Panda Express all have been sick since, well this was the night before last so yesterday um, they were all like eh, something just doesn't feel right and still today they're like yeah I still don't feel right. And then my other daughter, she also ate it. She took a couple bites and she told me right away, she's like, something's weird about this. It doesn't taste the same. I don't want it. And she didn't eat it. But the rest of them did. And now they're all sick. So, I don't know. I feel bad for them. I had to go buy some extra Pepto-Bismol because they all had stomach aches. Nobody's throwing up or anything. But they're just saying that their stomach hurts. So, I don't know if it's like, Food poisoning or if the food was bad or whatever but I don't know anyway way too long rambling about this I'm gonna try to actually get this video up tonight I've been putting I try to put my videos up between like noon and 3 p.m. mountain standard time um, but because I, I think today is like day six ish where I haven't had a video um, I think I'm gonna go ahead and put it up today and hopefully maybe tomorrow I'll have time to do a stitch with me or maybe a couple of stitch with me's and just break them up during the week we shall see um, as far as mania goes, I still haven't decided what I'm going to do. I still think I'm going to do um, every other day new start whip. And if I get to a point where I feel like I'm too overwhelmed with the whips, or I mean with the new starts from starting too many new starts, or if I get to a point where I'm just like, my heart's not in starting these new stars. I really want to work on some of these whips. Then I'll only spin from the whip wheel. But the goal is to at least touch every whip that I have. And um, I don't know. I don't, there is no goal, I guess. That's why I call it mania, right? Because it's insane. Anyway, we shall see. We'll see how it goes. We'll see how it goes. I, I'm not going to hold myself to it because I always say that I'm going to do something and then I don't fucking do it. Tell myself I was gonna have a birthday finish on that chopping ball didn't happen so I'm not saying anything else okay guys I gotta go I'll see you guys in the next one